Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I've been getting over being sick, but I think it was a blessing because this video was going to be super lighthearted and then more information came out. So strap in and then get comfortable being uncomfortable. Let's do this. Yay! Hi, my name's Daniel. And today we're going to be looking at a girl. Who is she? Why is she? And where did she come from? Not just any girl though. This one is former Nickelodeon star and current internet personality, Jojo Siwa. One of Time's most influential people of 2020. Regardless of what the fools over at Time would have you believe, unless you watched Dance Moms or are under the age of 12, it's likely you've never heard of this particular girl. I'm disappointed in myself that I know who this is. But if there's anything the internet has taught me, it's that, and say it with me, being an obnoxious and toxic person will lead you to success. JoJo made her initial breakthrough on the reality show Dance Moms, a TV show for sadistic people that showcases everything wrong with child beauty and dance competitions. The atmosphere of the show reeked of abuse, and the show's host, Abby Lee Miller, has faced mountains of controversy, from making children perform risque burlesque routines, to pitting the children against each other, to commenting on her employees' weight, making racist remarks, and even committing $700,000 worth of fraud. That is quite the rap sheet. Honestly, I can make a whole video about why that show is disgusting, and as I was researching Searching for this one, I strongly considered doing that. However, maybe next time. Jojo's mom in particular would often yell and scream at her child. And I'm telling you this because the context is important. The more I watch interviews and read excerpts and just learn about this whole situation, the more I just start to kind of feel bad for everybody who's involved with it. I like making fun of stuff, but as I was scripting this video, things started to take a pretty significant turn. So this will probably end up being more serious than viewers are used to, um, deal with it. Jojo has been taking a huge turn in her marketing as of late in an attempt to switch to a bad girl aesthetic. Gone are her signature bows and sparkly clothing and child-friendly persona, and supposedly in their place are provocative lyrics and kiss-inspired outfits. Yeah, like a sexy glam, Gene Simmons sea creature. Oh, that I have no clue what they are. <laughs> While I might not care all that much for JoJo's output on Nickelodeon or social media any more than any other 20 year old boy might, I have young sisters who see this type of content, and that's who JoJo is marketing herself towards. JoJo is trying to be a role model for young girls and kids, which is why I believe her actions need to be subject to more scrutiny, even from people like me. Her new songs that she's been promoting until they make your ears bleed have lyrics that she professes to be actually terrified by. I was very afraid of the lyrics of Karma. I wasn't ready to say I was a bad girl. Let's take a look at these lyrics, because I, for one, am horrified at the thought of what I might find. Karma's a bitch, I should have known better. If I had a wish, I would have never effed around. As I got older, I really wanted to create stuff that was gonna make the world say, what the fuck? <laughs> Doesn't she mean what the F? Let's take a closer look at this song and think about it for more than a second. I mean, something of this artistic quality surely deserves deliberation from us, and who am I to deny it that deliberation? Even cursory interpretation of the lyrics reveals that this song is about getting what you deserve after cheating. The person committing the cheating in this song is the singer, so JoJo would be the one cheating. She talks about the song in interviews as though it's empowering to her, but the lyrics are about hurting her partner by sleeping around and then feeling bad about it. Even stranger though, is that Jojo didn't even write the song. <laughs> Karma's a Bitch is a song recorded by Brit Smith in 2012. It was gonna be released as a single, it was teased many times before ultimately getting scrapped. The song was also recorded initially by Miley Cyrus as early as 2011. And JoJo's team just bought the rights to the song, changed the lyrics of I would have never messed around to I would have never effed around, kept everything else the same, and then started passing the song off as her own. She invented it, just like she invented a new genre of music. That I wanted to start a new genre of music. It's called gay pop. Gonna Kubrick stare you, Jojo. Really? You invented it? No one has made, in my generation, this extreme of a switch. You went from sparkles to sparkles. What are you talking about? In addition to taking music, she's also just supposedly stealing it. 
pickpocket! She recently debuted a new song, and during that debut performance, she said that she wrote it about her ex. This song is about one of my exes. Yet the song in question was written by this TikToker named Emmeline. I like to imagine that this is real, though. Like, just think about it for a second. Imagine writing a song about someone else's ex. This'll show him. Oh, hey, male Taylor Swift. What are you writing? Your next hit song? I'm writing a diss against one of my exes. Absolutely horrible person. I'm sorry that you had to go through that. I'm sorry your ex sucked so bad. You, you think, oh, no, you fool. You absolute fool. You stupid, dumb, idiot, stupid. I'm not writing this song about my ex. I'm writing it about someone else's ex. There's a list of troubling incidents from JoJo's brand over the years, and I don't really wanna get overly hung up on them. So just for the sake of context, we're gonna run through them really quick. JoJo posted her branding over the Black Lives Matter square and didn't listen when people let her know that that was stupid. Hi, here's our movement to combat racial inequality and discrimination. <laughs> That old thing. Yeah. That's mine now. Along with my song about someone else's ex. She had a children's game called JoJo's Juice. What a title. Which was basically just truth or dare. It had a recommended age of six years old and included question cards that are near and dear to every six-year-old's brain. Such as, have you ever walked in on someone naked? Have you ever been arrested? Have you learned the art of twerking? And the ever popular, have you gone outside with without underwear. Marketing streaking to kids, <laughs> my fame. She later denied direct involvement with writing this game. So I had no idea. JoJo had a line of cosmetic makeup products which were sold at Claire's, which ended up testing positive for asbestos, prompting the FDA to release an alert informing consumers that it was being recalled and should you know, stop being used by anyone who owned it. In a now private YouTube video titled My Makeup, Siwa explained that she trusted in other people when it came to making the product in question. Which means that it's okay if people get cancer. I can't, I can't do that, I can't. You might be noticing a pattern here. Jojo affiliates herself with people like Shane Dawson, James Charles, and Colleen Ballinger, and some of the other people who've been covering this same topic keep insinuating that these were sponsored collaborations and more PR mistakes than anything else. Uh, but this can't be true as she claims herself to be longtime friends with some of these creators. She even went on a podcast and defended Colleen when those allegations of inappropriate behavior with children were made. I've known Colleen for since I was since I was 12. I don't think this adult is a groomer because we've been good friends since I was a kid. It might not be the take that she thinks it is. Honestly, the whole entire thing is very gross. She also inexplicably decided to fake being pregnant for months, which is so strange. Like, why? Why would you do that? On an unrelated note, I am currently expecting twins. My wife got me pregnant. Okay, so now you're up to speed on how JoJo is no stranger to controversy and how she's currently trying to rebrand herself. Instead of being an obnoxious kid, she's going to be an edgy, obnoxious adult. And if that was all, then this video would likely consist of me making some fun, then moving on. However, as I said, this topic turned more and more serious the more I learned about it. The question you might be asking yourself is why? Why is this girl attempting to change public perception of her so drastically? You could conclude that she's getting older and wants to distance herself from her initial child-friendly image, and you probably wouldn't be too far off. However, an article that was written just a couple of months before JoJo's rebrand might start to change your mind. Rolling Stone posted this interesting piece on February 13th, discussing one of JoJo's other ventures over the past few years, XOMG Pop. Don't know what that is? I didn't either. Let's find out. According to Wikipedia, during the 17th season of America's Got Talent, JoJo and her mom Jessalyn formed the music group XOMG Pop, which included a bunch of highly talented dancers, including one Leia Sanderson. Sanderson was born with a birth defect that causes the spinal cord to not form properly. Despite many medical hurdles, she fought and overcame it all to audition and then get selected to be a part of XLMG, which is amazing. But unfortunately, Sanderson and her mother allege that they were subjected to inhumane treatment. And I'm going to read this next bit of the article in full without paraphrasing or joking around. 
The Sandersons, as well as multiple sources close to the production, alleged that the Siwas subjected the children to grueling rehearsals, sometimes foregoing school breaks with meager compensation. They also alleged that Sanderson was forced to work under intense physical duress, with Jessalyn encouraging her to attend a video shoot just a few weeks after she underwent spinal cord surgery. In one instance just days before the surgery, Leia started bleeding through her belly button during a rehearsal for a performance at the Children and Family Emmys which was hosted by Jojo. Rather than encouraging her to take a break, Jessalyn told her to put a maxi pad on it so it wouldn't leak onto her costume. She was more concerned about the costume than the child. They also alleged that Jessalyn was overly cruel to her young charges, calling them names and in one instance shaming them for having a disability. Jojo, meanwhile, could also be nasty and domineering, a sharp contrast from her upbeat on-screen persona. She played a role in helping to build a cutthroat environment, playing favorites and pitting members against each other. Maybe Jojo was a bad girl all along. But here's the crazy part. Supposedly, allegedly, after the Sandersons tried to talk to other parents and management about the mistreatment they were being subjected to, they got fucking fired. I couldn't believe what I was reading. And you heard me correctly, they fired this poor girl and her mother. Each additional bit of context just makes this sound worse and worse. For example, they made the girls do hours and hours of unpaid work in a hostile work environment. The financial situation of these moms and their daughters were outright dangerous, and the Siwas leveraged that against them. At one point, Sanderson's mother had to start working for Jessalyn Siwa herself, being made to scrub her toilets and organize JoJo's closet. Quick aside here, but why on earth would you ever name your kid Jessalyn? It's like the dad wanted to name her Jess and the mom was like no we'll name her Lynn like Sarah Lynn from Bojack Horseman I digress this is stupid another example of financial manipulation that XOMG subjected their employees to the girls were promised ten thousand dollars for recording their first album as a group together which I don't know, that seems kind of low to me. I mean, making an entire album is an incredible amount of work, which involves dozens of people working for months and months to create a finished product. $10,000 in those parameters isn't even close to minimum wage but the Sandersons weren't paid $10,000 at all. Jessalyn told them that since she had to pay for the Airbnb that they stayed in, since they got uprooted from their homes and kind of taken to LA to work there, because she had to pay for the Airbnb, they would only be paid $4,000. Jesus Christ, man. The girls weren't given school breaks, had to work nine hour days, which is the maximum amount of time that a kid can work under California labor laws. The girls were also made to do a ton of social media work work for no pay whatsoever. The article talks about prizes. If a girl made a TikTok that got way more views than any of her, the other girls' TikToks, then that girl and her family would receive like a $500 cash prize. It can take me 20 plus hours to script, record, and edit one of these videos. And now I have people helping me, but like there's a ton of work that goes into doing this type of stuff. This method of paying your employees is incredibly unprofessional and it sucks. It looks sloppy. Keep in mind, a lot of this is their word versus the Siwas. Since the Siwas have denied some of the allegations and completely failed to respond to many others. Jesslyn has also made some comments calling Sanderson's mom's intentions and well-being into question, implying that she was difficult to work with and disruptive on set. Will we ever know the exact truth? I think that I can extract some from this situation. When I was a kid, I did some work in the entertainment industry. I was an extra in some movies and shows, a background actor, then played leading roles in some educational productions and independent films and short films. The industry, and more importantly, the powerful people in it, go to your parents and promise the world in exchange for you. Fame and fortune, just take your kid out of school, just uproot yourself, just leave your family, just work for long hours, unpaid paid. Just pay us for the privilege of being able to work for us. You've got to start at the bottom. You have to sacrifice to make it anywhere. They actually guilt you for wanting to be paid at all. In this case, the Sandersons were fired and were never paid for many of the things that they were told they were going to be paid for. However, I want to draw your attention back to Jojo herself 
and her manager mom, her momager. She suffered abuse at the hands of this industry and came out the other end fairly successful. But she's still working herself to death. She just turned 20 and she still has all these adults kind of puppet mastering every aspect of her life. She's rehearsing for way longer than anyone could expect for a song that's not even hers. Oh, in case you didn't hear the joyous news, by the way, Brit Smith's original version of Karma's a Bitch was released in the last few days and it actually charted higher than JoJo's version. Oh, that's gonna hurt! Even with all of the hype around JoJo's version of the song. Karma really is a bitch, huh? JoJo's an adult now, and she's turned around and continued the cycle of abuse that permeates this, frankly, at times, disgusting industry that's kind of eating itself alive. Art is so powerful and beautiful and just one of the, the most effective tools of communication and expression. It's amazing. But the managers and producers and agents and reviewers and so on and so forth, you get the point. They, it, it can all be very toxic. And what makes it worse is that these kids might not have been given any sort of choice. Their parents kind of got scammed and made the choice for them. Do you remember Dance Moms, the show JoJo made her debut on? Let's take a quick look at the Wikipedia page for it. Several members of the Abby Lee Dance Company, both on and off the show, have come forward about Miller's violent tactics, which include forcing students to leap while holding five pound sacks of potatoes, remarking if you gain five pounds, you'll feel that heavy. Miller has been accused of naming her students' bellies, posting their weights around the studio, pinching students until they bled, and sending her under students' underwear and lingerie for Christmas. This show went on for eight seasons. The parents saw and understood how these fucking people were treating their kids. They just didn't care. Every single adult involved is a bad guy here. And to some extent, so are the people who watched and supported a show like this. I'm not joking. People who create demand for stuff like this are nuts. The whole idea of a show like this, but for kids, is just so infuriatingly stupid. I have lost sleep over it, but that might just be because I'm sick. You know the Hunger Games, where the kids have to, like, fight to the death for our entertainment. Let's recreate that, but instead of randomly choosing names out of a hat, let's see if parents will just give their kids up. And in this godforsaken timeline, they fucking do. Now you might be wondering what happened to Leia Sanderson, the poor girl who had her dreams taken from her for wanting to be treated fairly. Well, again, according to the Rolling Stone article, after months of depression, as well as struggles with her health, Leia says that she's on the path towards developing a new perspective about her time in XOMG pop. She loves that she got to meet and work with some of her favorite celebrities. She's glad to have made some lifelong friends along the way. And she's now back enrolled full-time in school, thank the Lord, and she started dancing again. I think that's beautiful, and uh, I only wish her the best. You may have heard this saying before, hurt people hurt people. And it's easy to write off the abuse that Jojo inflicted on these kids as exactly that. But she's an adult, and many people get hurt and don't then go on to do the same thing. Hell, I've been hurt in very specific ways in my life before, and I go out of my way to try and help people who are suffering in the same situations or with the same types of abuse. Abuse isn't an excuse for more abuse. What a great quote. People should, uh, people should look up to me for saying something like that. Despite finding some form of peace with her whole situation, Sanderson still harbors resentment towards the Siwas, with whom she spent almost two years of her life, and with whom she says she has not spoken since her mother received the May 6th text. She says, it's like they use you and then throw you in the trash. The May 6th text in question was the incredibly cowardly way that they fired her over text by simply saying, we have decided we will not be continuing to invest in Leia, and she's released from the group, effective immediately. Now that two years of your life are down the drain and you've been uprooted from everything you've ever known and you are hopelessly behind in your education, guess you gotta go home. Tough luck. You know what I say to that? I say, fuck these people. JoJo's rebranding took place right after these allegations dropped and oh gee, it makes so much more sense now. It's almost like her team wants to distract us from everything we just discussed with controversy and terrible lyrics. 
Chad Chad, if you're watching this channel, you know who that is, made a really interesting point in her video about this topic that made me pause even before I learned about all this. The PR surrounding this rebrand is just exactly what a 50 year old mom's idea of rebellion would be. All right, here's the plan. What if you said, bitch? That's bad, that's pretty bad. What if you went to a red carpet event wearing makeup similar to a hip and current band? Like, um, I, I don't know, um, Kiss? Really makes you stop and think. All of these adults failed these children. And this cycle of abuse is being perpetuated through generation after generation of new talent. And it's all just so nice to think about, you know? I'm so happy that we're aware enough to watch it happen in real time. I'm just so glad that we- <coughs> Jesus. I guess in conclusion, if you're a parent or want to be a parent and you're watching this, please don't exploit your children for views and money. It's ultimately very harmful and can make your kid compare themselves to others in a way that's ultimately very, very detrimental to their sense of self-worth. Instead, encourage their passions if you can and definitely do your research to keep them safe. The bottom line is if someone ever promises you the world, it is very likely that they're lying to you. And I guess that'll do it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Sorry it ended on such like a down note. I honestly considered not making this at all after I started learning more about the topic that was deeper than just the cringy TikToks that JoJo was making. Then I watched like 30 other commentary channels that are way bigger than me all kind of jump on it immediately and all of their videos were super lighthearted in tone and it just made me second guess my perspective on it i guess because i was like huh maybe it's not as big of a deal as it seems like it is to me but then i thought about it for more than you know, two seconds and yeah honestly i don't think enough people are drawing attention to the bits of this story that to me seem to actually matter so i thought i would throw my two cents in and honestly after making this i feel better. Uh, go watch Quiet On Set now.